Aloha, I'm Irina Van Dyke, MD from Out of the Doldrums. Today, we're going to discuss something really fascinating, the impact of adding a banana to your smoothie. Picture this, it's a typical morning and you're blending up a storm, creating your go-to fruit concoction full of all the goodies. You've heard about the health benefits of fruits and vegetables, particularly the magic of certain compounds called flavin 3 alls or flavanols. These natural substances found abundantly in various fruits and vegetables are superheroes in the nutrition world. They're linked to a multitude of health benefits. But here's the kicker. Would you ever have thought that the ingredients you put in your smoothies may interact in such a way that you lose all the nutritional punch you were hoping to get from the smoothie in the first place? Today, we'll be discussing a groundbreaking paper titled, quote, Impact of Polyphenol Oxidase on the Bioavailability of Flavin 3 all in Fruit Smoothies, a Controlled, Single-Blinded Crossover Study, end quote. The study was published in the journal Food and Function in August 2023. It's open access, meaning anyone can read the paper for free. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Let's dive into what that paper found, shall we? So the paper looks at flavin 3 alls. What the heck are those? Well, flavin 3 alls are a type of flavonoid. They're different from flavanols, which are also flavonoids, but slightly different types. Common flavin 3 alls are epicatechin and catechin, which are primarily found in tea, especially green tea, apples, berries, grapes, and cacao. There's many scientific studies supporting the notion that increasing habitual intake of flavin 3 alls results in improvements in health, especially cardiovascular health and cognitive function. In fact, they are so important that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recently issued a recommendation that we consume 400 to 600 milligrams daily for cardiometabolic protection. A really good way to get these flavin 3 alls is by consuming smoothies. You really can pack so much nutrition into one smoothie. But here's where it gets complicated. Some very popular smoothie ingredients contain an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, or PPO. PPO has a well-documented role in enzymatic browning of fruits, vegetables, and grain products. So when you cut that apple and it turns brown, PPO is to blame. This paper wanted to investigate the effect that PPO has on the content and bioavailability of flavin 3 alls. So in this controlled, single-blinded, crossover study, researchers took eight healthy men between the ages of 25 and 60. Volunteers were asked to consume two different fruit smoothies with different PPO activities. The first was a banana smoothie with naturally high PPO activity, and the second was a mixed berry smoothie with naturally low PPO activity. A standardized cocoa extract was added to each smoothie, which contained a known amount of epicatechin, one of the flavin 3 alls. Lastly, they had a control intervention where they gave the same amount of epicatechin in capsule form. The smoothies were consumed within one hour of preparation. The researchers then looked at epicatechin content in the smoothies. The epicatechin in the banana smoothie plummeted quickly. Take a look at this graph. Then they looked at the people that drank the smoothies. They actually drew their blood and were able to measure the metabolites of the epicatechin called SREM or SREM. Here is the SREM after taking a capsule of epicatechin. Here is the SREM after eating the banana smoothie. And here is the SREM after the mixed berry smoothie. Quite a big difference. The banana high PPO smoothie reduced plasma concentrations of SREM by 84%. That's huge. Lastly, they looked at a mixed berry smoothie with banana. It decreased the SREMs pretty significantly too. So at the end of the day, what should we take away from all this? Well, Adding a banana to your smoothie can reduce smoothie benefits, especially if it's a smoothie that's high in epicatechin. The PPO just seems to dramatically reduce bioavailability of flavin 3 alls and potentially other bioactive compounds. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are other foods that also have high PPO activity, and some of them shocked me. Here's a table summarizing this. Bananas, of course, are number one. Beet greens, my beloved beet greens, are number two. Then PPO levels decrease pretty significantly in things like apple, pear, beets, avocado, etc. 
I still love a good banana, and I think bananas can be a good snack. But maybe we should be eating them in isolation rather than in a smoothie or with other high flavin all foods. Similarly, beet greens can be eaten in isolation as opposed to in a smoothie with everything else. Maybe I'll sub kale for my beet greens in the smoothie. The researchers, they couldn't even quantify PPO levels in kale, it was so low. Lastly, there are some drawbacks. This was a really small study. There was only eight participants that crossed over between the groups. It would be really nice to see a larger study done on this with more subjects to validate the results and hopefully females in the study too. All right, it's a wrap. What'd you think of the study? Is it gonna change how you make your smoothies? Are you gonna ditch the banana? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so make sure you let us know in the comments what you think of this video and let us know what topics you wanna to hear discussed in future videos. Until next time, cherish your health and aloha.